Here's one of my favorite blockbusters from the last 15 years. It's the first of the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the recent one that came out, Rise of the Planet of the Apes from 2011. Here's why I think it's really valuable to watch. It's interesting, fun, good for families. Coming up next. <laughs> Rise of the Planet of the Apes, 2011 blockbuster starring James Franco, but really starring Andy Serkis playing the you know chimpanzee named Caesar, who is the subject, the main character, the hero of the trilogy that eventually comes out, the last two movies helmed by Matt Reeves, this one directed by Rupert Wyatt. And I've always appreciated this movie. I've seen it four or five times, most recently with my youngest son, who has loved monster movies, and King Kong. He's loved King Kong since he was three or four years old. This movie is riffing on all of that stuff stuff all the King Kong movies all kinds of monster movies in fact this movie is what King Kong a prison break movie sort of an animal rights movie it's like a boy and his dog movie I know it's a man and his monkey movie and there have been a lot of those like Clint Eastwood's every which way but loose a bunch of these like man and chimpanzee movies in movie history so I find that this movie is not just a one-off you know entertaining blockbuster but it's riffing on all kinds of movie history including Putting the setting in San Francisco, having, spoiler alert, the monkeys of the, the apes, the primates cross the San Francisco, famous San Francisco Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, into the Redwood Forest at the end of the movie. It's using all kinds of San Francisco locations as the next movie, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Well, I like that a lot. I actually also think this is a great origin story. You know, the first Planet of the Apes movie back in the 1960s, Charlton Heston has this fantastic and famous twist at the end of the movie. This movie will spoil that twist for you so it's a little iffy whether you give this movie to people first or the original planet of the apes but as an origin story i like some of the material in this it's about scientists a corporate scientific endeavor trying to make a drug or gene therapy that improves the brain actually uh, regenerates the brain or you know damaged brain tissue or and this is the offset in the movie or the side effect can improve the brain and this is the subject of like flowers for algernon great science fiction short story and then novel by daniel keys would you rather have your your brain as it is or would you rather be more intelligent i think most people would pick increased iq that's the case in this movie where james franco the scientist has this drug develops it in chimps his lab is shut down. He gives the drug to his dad, who is senile, maybe Alzheimer's, and it improves his dad, played by John Lithgow. Who wouldn't want that in real life? So that's a really interesting premise, first of all. Then it improves the animals. So an ch ordinary chimpanzee goes to becoming like, acting like a human being, as Caesar does in this movie. And so then you have this question of, can we make animals rise up? Well, that's the origin story. You know, how did the apes and Planet of the Apes become intelligent and populate the Earth through this miracle drug made by James Franco and this corporation? But there's a catch. Now, the catch is, there's. I'm going to give spoilers right now, so here you go. The drug is a virus, and the virus infects humans and harms them, even kills a lot of them off. So that's the origin story of Planet of the Apes. Most of the humans die off apes improve and they their immune system isn't affected so i like that there's a double effect here and then you get a you know actually one interesting science fiction premise quite honestly and that's what's happening and you see the development of that in this very movie now besides that i like the main character of caesar the movie is really fast moving as it goes through the stages of life from you know birth actually his mother at the beginning of the movie captured and, you know, that classic Planet of the Apes thing where it could be a racial allegory, as it turns out. And you could read that into this movie. Enslaved in Africa, brought over and changed the U.S. And then this character of Caesar has to deal with the question, what is Caesar? Classic movie question, who am I? Like a Lawrence of Arabia thing. And so then, who am I? Well, Caesar's going to find that out. And he find out he's a lab experiment and his mother's dead and he doesn't have his original environment. So he's going to have to make his own environment in this movie. I like also that he goes from being in the home, even kind of contained in the attic, which is safe, but also, you know, a prison. And that's the double nature of this movie. Again, he's, he's loved by his master or his friend, the James Franco character, but it's a controlling relationship as well. And so do you want prefer freedom for Caesar or security? And that's the that's the trade-off. That, and one of his ethical choices in this movie is to, to ask, would I rather be free but in the animal shelter prison that I'm in, or would I rather have security and go back home but also be in prison there? So great of, of, of an ethical choice in this movie. 
for the CGI character played by Andy Serkis. So I find that the movie moves from, you know, childhood, growing up, you know, frolicking in the Redwood Forest, being captured, put in an animal shelter, which is really nasty. And Caesar has to learn to grow up. It's a call of the wild kind of thing, a la Jack London, where in the call of the wild, the dog is taken from a loving human environment, but it's unnatural to the dog to a wild environment where the dog has to learn the law of club and fang. Well, Caesar has to do that. He's put into the animal shelter and has to learn about chimpanzees in their tribalistic or primate ways. And so then he's got to adapt to that environment. And that's a very classic American story. Can you adapt to your environment and survive or not? Naturalism 101. And so the rise of Caesar is rise from child to adult to leader, from child to decision maker, and so on and so forth. It's a great character development by a character who says almost nothing. Mostly it's sign language. He does say a couple of human words. Another thing I like about this movie, it's wonderful in certain stretches because it's a silent movie. There's no talking for a while. And that will be developed in the Apes trilogy, especially in the last movie, War of the Planet of the Apes, which is quite honestly mostly a silent movie itself. Now, I'm aware of some of what I think are the flaws in this movie. I think Brian Cox is underused. I'm not sure James Franco is all that, you know, perfect for this role. Some of the human characters, and that's the always a threat when you make animals, you know, the main characters, will the humans come off as fully human or will they be, eh, you know, two-dimensional? I think maybe that's a threat in this movie. There's a lot of wild direction in this movie, maybe too much camera movement. Um, but there's a lot of things like that that I, I dismiss because I like the subject matter, the treatment of the subject matter, viral lab le leaks, labs that are lax in policy and maybe greedy for money, which is a real world threat, by the way, for viruses escaping labs, whether they're government controlled or corporate. Anyway, the, this movie, you know, I hate to say this, but it kind of, you know, brings up COVID in a way, nine years before COVID happened in, two, in the year 2020. There's a question of how you treat animals in the lab, animal rights, animals in captivity, in this primate shelter in the middle of the movie versus being in, you know, human homes and where can they live, and should people have exotic animals. There's like tons of interesting topics and themes in this movie, which I think are treated pretty pretty well. And overall, I do like science fiction, so I'm probably biased to this movie. I would highly recommend Pierre Boulet's original Planet of the Apes book. It's a great book. But this, to me, is one of the two or three best Plan Planet of the Apes movies, one of the best Apes movies. So for all those reasons, I really think this movie is good. And it can be profitably watched with children. It is good for children, in my opinion. I think they will like it, eight or nine or 10 years old. Perfect, it, there's nothing really, there's a lot of you know threats of violence in it, a few scary moments, but nothing really that serious. So I like this movie. It's one of those rare movies that doesn't play too adult, but plays to anybody, and yet, I think adults can get a lot out of it. What do you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.